Now, let's come down past the uh, Turkish tent. Because I can see a couple of things I want to show you down here. The first is this lovely Pyrrhus here, called Temple Bell. And look at it, absolutely cascading with flowers. I trimmed up the base to give it more of a sort of a tree-like shape. And I think it's worked quite well, really. There they are, dripping, dripping with flowers. This one doesn't have such good coloured new growth, but I think you'll agree the flowering is fantastic. Moving from the Pyrrhus, the next thing I want to show you is this shrub, which has got really quite large. It's got beautiful uh, foliage, interesting foliage and a lovely autumn colour, but in February it covers itself with these little mustard yellow flowers. Which are quite intriguing because they are made up mostly of uh, stamens and little teeny weeny yellow petals. This is a shrub called Lindera obtusiloba and this uh, actually came from my late father-in-law's garden. Quite a few of the plants in his garden made their way here after his death. Little patch of sunshine on an otherwise rather grey morning. I just love these cyclamineous daffodils. They have that sort of rather surprised look. They also sometimes look as if they're facing into a strong wind, with their hair flying behind them. Nice with a few crocuses. As if by magic and over quite a short period of time is this lovely little woodland plant, a cardamine. Started off with a little, little a bit given to me by a friend. Disappeared actually for a couple of years. I think it was deciding what to do. Anyway, it decided it quite liked it here and, and it's popping up actually in the path as well. So I don't begrudge it. It's got lovely foliage as well. And these sweet pink flowers. This uh, plant can be described as invasive if you don't like it, and a happy spreader if you do, and I do. Right, Bertie, let's carry on. Coming around the corner, I bemoaned the fact in a previous video that Cornish Spring was out, but the very early rhododendron crossbill wasn't, which is unusual because it normally comes out about the same time. Anyway, here it is, of course, it has come out. And it's the earliest rhododendron here in this garden to flower. As you can see, it's gone up to about three meters plus and is leaning on this albizia and being supported by the Chilean berberus, which is up above it. Rather an untidy grower, but luckily here it doesn't actually seem to matter. A hybrid developed in Cornwall.
rather upstaged by the uh, rhododendron crossbill flowers. Are the slightly more subdued drooping flowers of this quite large Chinese shrub called Corylopsis. It bears close inspection because as you get close you suddenly realize that the stamens are all tipped with this lovely red contrasting nicely with the yellow of the rest of the plant. There are various forms of this Corylopsis and various species too. It's a member of the witch hazel family, but no scent. If you follow me up here, I'll show you another Corylopsis. Sweet little yellow flowers. Rather sparsely flowered. And the name is Corylopsis porciflora. Behind the rhododendron, there seems to be a smell of spicy vanilla. And it's coming from this rather spreading and uh, slightly nuisance suckering plant. Let's go around the side because I think you can see it better from this, this angle. Here we are now entering the thicket. It's got a lovely scent but as you can see it does sucker like mad and needs to be kept under strict control. The flowers are sort of dangling down. And it's, it's often this sort of scent that pervades the air rather than if you get your nose into it and sniff, you smell it. Sometimes you're walking past and you wonder, eh, where's that coming from, that smell? Lovely scent. Tucked away at the back here so that you just get the benefit of the wafting scent and then it sort of becomes an undistinguished shrub for the rest of the year. In years gone by, I knew this as Osmeronia, but this is actually Ermleria serraciformis. There we are, another Latin tongue twister. This is a male plant with much more showy flowers than the female plant, uh, but obviously doesn't have any berries. But they are no great shakes either, so much nicer to have these lovely scented flowers instead. Non-stop play. Here's a little shrub doing its best to flower. It's only three years old or so and they take a long time to get going. Useful as a winter flowering scented shrub with these rather small flowers. It's called abeliophyllum, but it does take a few years to get, get momentum going and grow up. I'm very fond of this bank of camellias here, which have grown enormously tall. Right up there is Elsie Jury. She'll start flowering a little lower down. Let's walk through them, shall we? This is Margaret Waterhouse. Fabulous, fabulous camellia. And then we come to a really lovely camellia, this one. This is camellia. Leonard Messel, right up there. Wonderful flowers. 
very voluptuous uh, Ludwig Messel emigrated from Germany in 1890. He was a German Jewish banker and many German Jewish bankers came to England at that time. As befits his status, he, he buys Nyman's house in Sussex and sets about developing the garden with the help of his head gardener. The head gardener was called James Comber and his son Harold became a famous plant hunter, went over to South America, Chile, and also Tasmania, introducing lots of plants from there. After Ludwig's death, Leonard took over and further developed the garden uh, and redesigned the house. His uh, son, Oliver, was a stage designer and talented family. Nyman's burnt down in uh, 1947, but didn't deter them from living there. <laughs> and they lived in the bit that hadn't burnt down, obviously. And the rest they left as a picturesque ruin in the garden. But he's had this wonderful camellia named after him, and also a wonderful magnolia, which we will see in a later video. Leonard's wife, Maud, also had a camellia named after her, which I haven't actually seen, or I haven't got in this garden. So I'm hoping one day maybe I'll have it, and then she can grow beside Leonard here in this garden. In a garden of unusual plants, I offer you another just here. This is a, a sorbus or a relative of a sorbus, depending on your point of view, but with the most wonderful leaves. This used to be Pleo sorbus megacarpa, but they decided, they decided that it should be sorbus megacarpa. Never mind that there's a sorbus megalocarpa, which actually I'm growing nearby. So uh, this could be rather confusing. Anyway, who am I to argue? I just love the leaves. Glossy, brown, and uh, with a slight silver sheen. Beautiful. The magnolia season is now starting, which I look forward to every year. And this is uh, perhaps a bit early, this delightful 10-year-old magnolia with the very appropriate name of Scented Gem. It's a form of the magnolia denudata discovered in the late John Gallagher's garden by Kevin Hughes, who named it Scented Gem. Very appropriate name, very spicy oriental type of scent from the flowers, very powerful. I've come indoors again because I think some camellias really look better in a vase than on the bush. And this one is a case in point as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't really stand out, especially where I've got it in the slight shade, but here you can admire the extraordinary sort of pincushion effect of the flowers. There is um, a central boss of these uh, adapted stamens, which are trying to be petals, petaloid they're called. This is a camellia called Bob's Tinsey. <laughs> 